and welcome to my YouTube video. So today I'm going to be painting this lovely white terrier. Um, painting white dogs, in my opinion, is probably the hardest um, because you can have a whole range of values from, from one to nine. So one is white, nine is black. And also as well, they very much take on the colour of their backgrounds. So before I show you the time-lapse video, I wanted to deconstruct this painting quickly for you to show you what I mean. So I've used a colour picker tool in Procreate to pull out the colours of the background, which I've lift listed on the left. I've done the same with the colours in the dog and listed them on the right. Notice how they're practically identical, but for the addition of the last couple of colours. So what I'm basically trying to say is that you have to mix the background colours into the dog's fur in order to make it look integrated into its background. That's very, very important. I also thought I'd quickly show you the colour shifts between warm and cool in the next diagram as well. So I think now we'll move on to the time lapse video and you can see my, pro my process as I move through the painting layers. The main issues that you'll have painting a white dog is the fact that the dog, it takes on all the colours of their background. And on top of that, you also have to contend with really, really subtle colour shifts of temperature. So it's very tempting to paint what you think you see than what you actually see. So in this, this painting that I'm doing here, in the reference photo, it would be very tempting for me to think, well, you know, this is a white dog, so um, white dog, dark shadows, I'll just use black and white. And it sat on a brown chair, so I just need some brown colours and a bit of white. But the problem is that that will give you a very disjointed painting well, where you'll see basically a background and a dog. And you'll also probably get an issue with chalkiness as well because you'll have too much white in it. You have to understand what you are seeing in order to be able to paint it successfully. And there's a lot of colour in white. So you've got to look really, really, really hard. If you struggle, my suggestion is always hold something up like a, a mid-tone grey or a white next to what you're struggling to see. It'll help you see the colour and also the temperature. If you wanted to know what colours I've used, um, what paint colours I've used in this painting, then if you have a look in the description, I've listed all my, my colours and also all the, all the other things that I've used as well, like solvents and paper type and everything like that. I always start off a painting with a wash of raw sienna and terps. That is just my colour that I like to use. It's I find it very pleasant to my eye. Um, so this is the same whether I'm doing it on paper or canvas. Um, this paper is just 280 GSM or purpose paper, but you can use oil painting paper too if you want to. It's not specifically one or the other. I find raw sienna a great colour to start with as as it always gives my canvas like a little boost of warmth, which is really, really easy to kill if you want to. Um, I find it actually much harder to get the warmth in without it, because obviously as you lighten your colours and you get further and further, further up in, in value, you have to add more and more and more white. So I find that the, um, the raw sienna, sort of the light wash really gives my canvas a good boost of warmth, which is really helpful um, for giving you that warmth to start with. But that said, you, you can start off with any colour you like. It doesn't have to be raw sienna. So if you preferred something like raw umber, that's fine. Just go with what you prefer. So going back to the point that it's important that you understand what you see. So if you have a good look at your reference photo and you have to remember that cool light equals warm shadows and warm light equals cool shadows. So you have to look at your reference photo and try and work out which it, which it is and what light the photo has been taken in. And don't forget as well that photos can lie 
They don't capture every single piece of information. So understanding these rules will help you add what information is missing in your photos. Remember as well that if you put too much warmth in your paintings, it will make them look muddy. So you have to get that balance between cool and warm correct. So in my reference photo, I have um, quite a lot of cool light in this picture. So that's why I chose to add a great big dollop of Indian yellow into that shadow in the left side of his neck. In the reference photo, that is not as pronounced, but it was needed in this picture. So just to outline my process then briefly, um, so you understand what you're seeing as I'm going along. I do paint in layers. I don't do it a la prima. I've experimented lots with different types of painting methods and I find that working in layers works best for me. But that said, if you do paint a la prima, I'm not suggesting that you change your process at all. Just look at other people's processes and take what you think is relevant to you and what makes sense. So my process is the manipulation of lots of other people's processes. It's not just from learning from one person. I've taken lots of people's influence and kind of put them all together into something that makes sense to me. I've gone a little bit off topic here. So we'll, we'll go back to what I was talking about in terms of painting in layers. So on the first layer, after the, the wash of Terps and raw sienna, I'm just really getting in all my shapes in the right place. Um, I'm just trying to get a sense of, of really what I'm looking at and I'm not stressing too much about tone and, and temperature. This is more about kind of getting the drawing correct, which is very, very important because if your drawing is wrong, it doesn't matter how well you paint it, it will just look wrong. So this first layer, it takes me about 20 minutes. So on the second layer then, I'm concentrating a, a bit harder and starting to map out my values and have a bit of a, a crude guess about the temperature that I think that I'm looking at. Colour doesn't really have to be complicated at all. I mean, my best advice is to always think about it in terms of temperature and just almost try and describe to yourself what colour you think that you are seeing. So my second layer, it's a very short layer. It really only takes me about 20 minutes to complete. It's not long at all. It's the third layer that is the long layer where I do all my work. So this is where I'm, I'm concentrating the hardest, but I've already given myself a, a bit of a head start at trying to map down what I'm looking at in layers one and two. And, and hopefully this should help you a little bit in layer three. So it's very important when you're working on this layer that you work on, well, in all layers, actually, that you work on the painting as a whole. Because if you don't work on the painting as a whole, you won't achieve the integration of your subject matter into that painting. So you really need to take your background colours that you've mixed up and use these to mix into your dog's fur whilst paying attention to the shifting temperatures. You cannot correctly judge whether what you're looking at is right unless you've been working on the whole thing because every colour looks different depending upon what's next to it. And if you've got great big unfinished sections, the colours won't look right. It'll just look off and you'll make bad judgments. This layer usually takes me about two hours and um, I'm not using um, any turpentine on this layer. I'm using a tiny, tiny bit of linseed oil, but my paint, this, this is the thickest layer of paint that I use. So the fourth layer is really just a tweaking and refining layer. Um, it's a very short layer. I'm, I'm not doing any like major painting. It's like maybe fixing a bit of tonal value here or maybe you know, a bit around the eye or it's, it's nothing major. So it, again, it's a very short layer. It maybe takes me 20 minutes. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video of um, painting this white dog. 
Painting white dogs is very hard, so don't feel bad if you do struggle with it because um, practice really does make perfect. You will get better at it the more that you do it. So I do try and post a video every week. So please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you for the next one.